Today, I want to talk a little bit about revenue forecasting, particularly for SaaS businesses. So you are looking to build a financial model for your company. Maybe you don't have any experience with financial modeling. Where do you want to start? Well, it's always going to be with your revenue forecast. And this is where the revenue formula comes in. So today I wanted to create an entire video just walking through the different ways that you can model revenue, things to consider, important metrics that you want to keep in mind, some of the challenges, some of the things that can really enhance the revenue formula, all of that I want to talk about in today's video. So starting at the very, very basics, what is a revenue model? What is a revenue formula? Essentially, it is what it sounds like. It is a mathematical description of how you generate revenue. And so if you can come up with your revenue formula and try to identify all of the key variables, all the components that go in to generating revenue, now you have a framework upon which to forecast your revenue into the future. And you can do that by identifying all of the metrics like churn rate, like price, all of those that come in to your revenue formula. So if you're looking to just get started, you can start with even just a pen and paper and try to write down how you generate revenue for your SaaS business. So if you're using a example like Spotify or Netflix, kind of the standard monthly subscription, you can start by going at a very high level and saying, I have a certain amount of customers that pay me a certain amount of money. So it's revenue equals price times quantity. And then you can try to break that down into the subcomponents to say, well, maybe my price doesn't have anything that makes it up. That's kind of like already a baseline metric. I, I set my price, I can change it. But my subscriptions, I can kind of break that down even further to say, I had a certain number of subscribers last month and then I got some new subscribers. I lost some subscribers. So then you could use those types of submetrics to further understand your revenue formula. And then you can say, how many did I lose? Well, it was the amount that I had last month times my churn rate and so on and so forth. And you can keep boiling them down until you get all of the bases to where you are at the very most granular level to understand your revenue formula. And then you can use that as the foundation upon which to forecast. So step one, whenever it comes to understanding revenue and forecasting revenue, it is all about understanding your revenue formula and just start with a pen and paper and just go as deep as you possibly can. So now that you have kind of a understanding of where to start and how to forecast, I wanna talk a little bit about the fundamentals of a SaaS revenue formula. So these are gonna be the typical ways in which SaaS companies make money. And the first one is gonna be the one that is probably the most obvious, which is the reoccurring revenue nature of SaaS. Now this can be monthly reoccurring revenue, this can be annual reoccurring revenue, this can be quarterly reoccurring revenue, and you can have a bunch of different packages that allow you to pay at these different options, but they're all gonna be used to calculate what's known as monthly reoccurring revenue, which is a very, very common SaaS metric. And what that essentially means is the monthly revenue that you recognize on your income statement every single month. Now I say that you recognize on your income statement because that doesn't necessarily have to be the amount of money that you actually collect. So for example, if you're a SaaS company that has an annual plan and you charge $1,200 per year for your annual plan for your SaaS, you might collect that $1,200 upfront, but you're going to spread that out over 12 months and recognize that as monthly reoccurring revenue. And then the logic there is that you're essentially making good, you're earning that revenue over the full 12 months, even though you're paid up front. So you can kind of spread that revenue out. If it's monthly, then it's easy because you just get paid every month and that's what you recognize every month. Quarterly is gonna be that same logic. Even though you get paid quarterly, you're gonna to wanna to recognize that monthly. So monthly reoccurring revenue is a very important metric, a very common metric whenever it comes to SaaS and a very important metric to obviously forecast because you're gonna be forecasting that monthly reoccurring revenue. Annual reoccurring revenue is just like monthly reoccurring revenue. It is just that number times 12. So a lot of people will say MRR and ARR are just two different ways of kind of explaining essentially the same metric just in different terms one is monthly and one is annual other things to consider whenever we're talking about revenue forecasting with SaaS companies are those non reoccurring charges so these can be things like implementation fees these can be things like just general one-off charges that you have but a lot of times people forget about those so that's something else that you need to consider you also need to consider 
how your customers generally change the packages that they purchase over their lifetime. So this can be upgrade rates and downgrade rates, people leaving your lower tier packages, going up to your higher tier packages. You want to make sure that that's accounted for in your forecast as well. And then generally any ancillary services that you have. So this could be any kind of white glove services or any kind of like consultation that you give in addition to what you charge for your SaaS, those also need to be included. I also wanna talk about some of the key metrics that are really important, not only for analyzing your SaaS company right now, but also whenever it comes to forecasting, you wanna get a sense of how these metrics are gonna change over time. So number one is gonna be your customer acquisition costs. So generally understanding how much it costs for you to get a customer over time, that's gonna be an important thing to forecast. And ideally you would want that number to go down over time, or if you've already got really low customer acquisition, position cost at least to stay roughly where it is and have there not be a degradation in your cost to acquire a customer. The other one is going to be your lifetime value. So we have an entire video on SaaS metrics where we cover lifetime value, but essentially what that is, is the amount of money or the amount of profit. If we're talking about net lifetime value, which again, if you don't know what that means, go back and watch the video. We'll link it in the description below. Essentially it's the amount of profit that you get per customer for the entire lifetime that they are a customer with you. If you wanna analyze those two metrics together, you can do the LTV to CAC ratio, which is again, something that we cover in the other video, but that essentially is the bang for your buck in terms of your marketing spend. So how much profit do you get per every dollar that you spend in marketing is very important. And then of course, the common ones that are gonna be important when it comes to forecasting, like your churn rate and your ARPU, which is the annual revenue per user, those are going to be very important as well. So just generally these kind of like important SaaS metrics that you use to analyze your business today, if you're already generating revenue, those are going to be very important and you might want to call them out specially whenever you're going to be forecasting revenue, just because that gives you a deeper understanding, not just of how much revenue you're going to be generating, but how your economics are going to be changing over time as you continue to grow and continue to get better. I'll talk really quickly about some of the challenges whenever it comes to forecasting a SaaS company. Now, I'll note first and foremost that SaaS companies are generally pretty easy, uh, relatively easy, I should say, to forecast for compared to things like e-commerce or, or other types of maybe less predictable revenue streams. So SaaS, whenever it comes to forecasting is one of the easier ones to forecast, but there are some nuances and things that we see people having some troubles with. So I'll just call that out. Um, one is just identifying what your churn rate is going to be. Some people have very variable churn rates, so their churn rate may be very low one month, very high the next. So just trying to understand what your churn rate is going to be and how that's going to change over time has been fairly tricky for some folks. I would recommend starting with the churn rate that you have now and being relatively conservative and then forecasting that your churn rate improves over time. And this is generally what I recommend that everybody does with their business is essentially setting goals for the most important metrics and forecasting what they are today and then forecasting that growth in the business over time by having those metrics improve. Another thing that we've seen some folks struggle with is seasonality with SaaS businesses. So this isn't true with every business, like Forecaster, for example, doesn't have a whole lot of seasonality, but there are some SaaS businesses out there that have a very, very high degree of seasonality, specifically like education companies, like if you're selling educational software for students or things like that. You may have a lot of sales whenever school's in session and very little sales whenever it's out of session, just as an example. But if you do have a highly seasonal SaaS business, that can be another tricky aspect of forecasting. And then another very, very common one, and this one's really more of a strategic decision, but it's forecasting profitability versus growth. And this is just something that's generally hard for a lot of founders is do I just try to grow as quickly as I can at all costs, or do I want to grow in a very sustainable way and try to be profitable? And this is really just kind of, it really comes down to what you want to do as a founder or a manager of the company. You can make a lot of money going both ways. You can make a lot of money raising a lot in venture capital and dumping it all into marketing and just growing like crazy and selling even when you're non-profitable. There have been a lot of founders that have gotten very wealthy doing that. Or you could take the more sustainable approach and have a profitable company and perhaps even make money with the profits of the company and then still go to sell for a lot and own perhaps more of the company because you've raised less 
in funding. So a lot of times when it comes to forecasting, it forces people to answer the question, do we want to become profitable or do we want to just keep raising money and grow at all costs? And that's really more of a philosophical question. But one tip that I would have there is model out your dilution every time that you go out and raise another round of funding, if you're going the high growth route, and then use some sort of a market multiple approach to value what your company could potentially be valued at at exit. And if you don't know what that means, we have another video that we're going to link in the description where I cover the different types of SaaS valuation models, but essentially forecast what your company could potentially be worth in the future. Multiply that by your fully diluted ownership percentage and see which one of these paths will is more likely to make me the most amount of money. And then also square that with the amount of work required for each path. So you may find that raising a lot of money could potentially make you more money, but it could be also two to three times harder or maybe it's not, maybe that's the easier path for you. It just kind of depends, but kind of weigh the relative difficulty of each path and the potential that you might make on each of those paths and then make whatever decision feels right for you. Now, I'm gonna end this video on some useful tools and resources if you're just getting started. If you are very, very low on funds and you need kind of a budget-friendly option, we have templates available for download at forecaster.co. I highly recommend, we're actually gonna link the SaaS template that we have available for download in the description here. So that's a great way just to get started. Or if maybe you have a little bit more money to play with and you've raised some funds, we highly recommend you checking out Forecaster, which we will also link that below. And those are our two recommended options. Uh, if you're on a budget, just use kind of a standard template. If you've got some money to work with, we highly recommend checking out Forecaster and our team of analysts help you think through all of this and really help you get started with your revenue forecasting as well as your entire financial model. So expenses and everything like that. And if you feel like I glossed over something or there's something you wish I would have gone deeper in in this video, please, please put it in the comments below and we will shoot follow-up content to make sure that we address anything and everything that you could potentially want to see in this type of video. But hopefully you got some value out of this. Happy forecasting.